Welcome to The Haunted Beard, everybody. My name is Jake. Thanks for joining me. So I've been making my way through the Alien franchise, and today I'm talking about The Notorious Alien 3. This is, of course, David Fincher's feature film directorial debut. And this is a film that I had only previously seen once before I just rewatched it again the other day. And for this viewing, I watched the assembly cut, which is basically just the extended version as it's about half an hour longer than the theatrical cut. Now, it had been quite a while since I had seen this. And so a lot of this felt like I was seeing it for the first time, and some of it really was the very first time, as this was the first time I've ever seen the assembly cut. So uh, I've got some thoughts about this one. So yeah, let's get into it. Alien 3 starts off right after the events of Aliens, as Ripley is still on the escape pod with Newt and Hicks. And we find out that she crash lands on this prison planet, Fury 161, and of course... She has brought a unknown guest, an alien creature, along with her. I'm going to break down my review into two parts. I'm going to start with the positives and then get into the negatives. The major positive here for Alien 3 for me is the visuals and just, you know, the overall look and presentation of it. I just kind of like the whole sci-fi vibe to it. I like the design of the prison. It, it kind of feels distinct. I feel like the film does something, at least visually, to kind of distinguish itself amongst the other alien movies. I like just kind of the dank, grungy, dark setting of the, the prison that they're in. And so just from a visual perspective, it looks good. And I think it helps, too, that, you know, Fincher is the director as the film kind of feels like a David Fincher movie, at least from a visual perspective, as a lot of the film has a very sort of orange, yellow, goldish hue and color palette to it. And he just does some nice stuff with the lighting and just kind of shadows and silhouettes and is, you know, always kind of doing interesting things with just shot selection and camera angles and, you know, high angle, low angle, and, and just framing and composing stuff in an interesting way. And so there is a visual component of this movie that I think is pretty engaging that I, I quite enjoyed. Beyond the visuals, there are a couple scenes that I like and I think work quite well. The first scene is earlier on in the film when the alien is first breaking out of, I think it's the dead bull carcass. That sequence plays out as it is intercut between this cremation ceremony that's going on and then it's cutting between that and the birth of the alien. And so it's kind of this cool thing as one of the prisoners is saying this sort of prayer basically and how every death ultimately gives birth to new life. And so it just so happens that the new life is the alien. But I just kind of like the editing and, and just sort of how that whole sequence fit together. I quite enjoyed. I also actually quite like the ending sequence, at least when the alien is chasing the prisoners throughout the hallways in the tunnels. Some of the first person POV stuff with the alien running through the tunnels is just kind of cool. And just kind of their, their whole plan of how to kind of trap it and catch it is is just kind of fun. I, I just like that sequence and just kind of how it all comes together and how it's shot and filmed and everything like that. Outside of that, there's not a whole lot more positive I can say about the film. I do like the musical score for the most part. There are a handful of moments where I felt like, I don't know, I was just kind of vibing with it. Like it, it just felt like it was, it was working and kind of, you know, contributing to the mood and the atmosphere of the movie. So there are some parts of the score that I think work pretty well that I enjoyed. But other than that... I do have a handful of negatives. Um, there, there's not a whole lot of the movie that I'm like really negative against. There's a lot of it that I'm kind of just sort of middle of the road with. I, I didn't hate my experience watching this by any means, uh, but there are a handful of issues that I have with this thing. The biggest issue that I have with this really comes from the very beginning in that you find out as soon as Ripley crash lands on the planet that Newt and Hicks are both dead which really sucks. So in a lot of ways, it feels like this film from the get-go is kind of just throwing out aliens altogether. It kind of just completely discredits all the events that transpired and these characters that you, you know, came to know and really liked. I mean, I really liked Hicks and Newt, especially her, her kind of mother-daughter-like bond with Ripley that it just really sucks, and I thought it was just a terrible decision to kill them off right from the get-go. Those two characters definitely deserved better than that, and I really would have liked to seen where this story would have gone 
if they would have kept those two characters alive, I think that would have been a much better decision. In addition to that, one of the new characters that were introduced to, Dr. Clemens, played by Charles Dance, he's one of the guys that we start to get to know, and, and they start developing that character. He has a bit of a, a relationship with Ripley, and, and some of those scenes between them two are, are kind of interesting. It's an element of the movie that I found at least engaging, and then they decide to kill him off like halfway through the film, which, again, really sucked, and so... It's like you guys are you're killing off all your good characters, right? You killed off the two great characters from the previous film. We get another potentially good character in this one. I'm, I'm engaged, kind of curious to see where his relationship with Ripley goes. And then you kill him off as well. And so, you know, right there is another thing. I was just like, man, this sucks. One of the other issues I had with Alien 3, and this may not have been as much of an issue with the theatrical version, but again, I watched the assembly cut, so that's what I'm giving my review on is that there are definite moments in this that feel kind of long and drawn out where it kind of feels like it sort of meanders, not a whole lot is going on, and it just it, it feels a little lengthy. There's a point in the movie about 85 to 90 minutes in where they end up trapping the alien in this room and sealing it off. And so for a moment, they can kind of breathe a sigh of relief as there's no threat or danger to them anymore. But this is only, like I said, 85, 90 minutes in. There's still an hour left. And it was at this point, I was like, okay, what are they going to do to fill another hour? Well, what they decide to do is have one of the prisoners make like literally the dumbest possible decision in that this guy, and I know he's kind of crazy and is, you know, kind of losing his mind, but still, it's such a stupid decision from a writing perspective. But they decide that this prisoner is basically obsessed with the alien creature and has to see it again. And so it goes into this room, opens up the door, walks right in, and of course gets eaten, but then it lets the alien creature out. So that decision from a writing perspective and, and what they use to kind of progress the story by having this guy make a completely idiotic decision to go and free the alien was really unsatisfying and kind of annoying. My other negative with the movie, and this is a little bit more of a nitpick, but it is something that bothered me a little bit, is that there are a handful of moments where the audio was very quiet, where, especially from Ripley's character, where she is delivering her lines in like a very whispered tone, and it's like so quiet to where I literally couldn't even hear it. And I watched the movie with subtitles though, but like if there wasn't any subtitles on the screen, I wouldn't have even thought she said anything at all. And so that was weird. And I don't know if that is more of a, a performance thing or just an, an audio issue or whatever, but there were a handful of times where I was like, I literally didn't even hear what she said. The last thing I want to talk about, though, is something I'm a little more mixed on, and that really has to do with the the world building a little bit and, and what Fincher was really trying to go for. This film spends a pretty good amount of time focusing on the community of the prisoners, and there's a, an emphasis on kind of some of the religious stuff and their beliefs that... You know, these are all some, you know, really hardcore criminals, murderers and stuff like that. And they've all taken on this, you know, kind of religious belief in God sort of thing, which is supposed to kind of help them, you know, uh, curb their behavior and, and murderous tendencies or whatever. Um, and so that's kind of interesting. They, they kind of get into that a little bit. You know, Charles Dutton does a pretty good job. His character is interesting as, as he's kind of the leader of some of the prisoners, but throughout all that, I feel like it, it doesn't really have anything all that compelling to say. And there was a large part of the movie, even after the movie's over, where I was trying to figure out like, okay, what exactly was Fincher going for here? And and I know some of the, the history of the production with this, this being his first film, you know, the producers were meddling in his business and were doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And Fincher has basically disowned the film. So I don't really... Uh, criticize him for this, but I was still trying through all that to figure out what exactly was he trying to say and what exactly was he trying to go for. And 
and I, I don't really know. <laughs> and it, it just, none of that sort of religious element stuff really said anything all that interesting or compelling to me. What I think he maybe was trying to go for is that in showing the behavior of these humans, that really humans are just as much of a monster as perhaps the alien. And so given how the film ends, when you've got the human version of Bishop coming back and trying to convince Ripley to not kill the alien because, that you know, of course they want to study it and stuff like that. I, I don't know. I, to me, I feel like Fincher's trying to say something along the lines of, like, human beings are just as evil and just as monstrous as the alien is, and maybe even more so because the alien is just acting within its own nature and we are consciously making decisions that are horrific sort of thing. So... Yeah, I don't know. That's kind of my guess as to what Fincher was trying to go for. But like I said, there's a lot of it there that he he does spend a lot of time kind of getting into just kind of the, the prisoner's community and sort of their way of life and their beliefs. But it, it doesn't really come out in a very compelling sort of way. So, yeah, those are my thoughts regarding the very ending, you know, Ripley basically taking the swan dive into the lava pit. I don't love it. I don't hate it. You know, it does kind of fit in with some of the darker themes of the movie and stuff like that. But yeah, it's it's all right. I, I don't know. I, I don't really have too strong of opinion one way or the other on, uh, on Ripley swan diving into the lava. But yeah, those are my thoughts. Overall, look, I, I didn't hate this film by any means. I, I had a, a decent time watching it. I think if I was to ever rewatch it, I would probably just go back to the theatrical cut. There's not really any reason this movie needs to be borderline two and a half hours long. So uh, I think as far as a grade on this one, I'm, I'm probably just going to be like right down the middle. I think I'm going to give it like a five out of ten. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see how that feels. So yeah, 5 out of 10 for me for Alien 3. Those are my thoughts. Hit me up down below. Uh, very curious about this one because typically it gets, you know, has a pretty kind of negative view, but I'm curious if there's anybody out there who likes it and um, what you like about it and, and what really works for you. Would be interested in hearing your thoughts. So that's all I got for you. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Like always, if you got anything out of this video, go ahead and do me a favor and do not click that subscribe button unless you want to be haunted by the beard.